Good morning and welcome back after a, a chilly, willy, Easter long weekend. Um, apparently spring will come eventually. Uh, Steph is a little befuddled as to when that'll happen, but it will eventually happen. Uh, welcome to the show. We have two very special guests in the studio here at 91.1 The Bridge this morning. We have David and Kathy Urdega. David is, of course, our Member of Parliament for Fort McMurray Cold Lake, and uh, Kathy is always there right by his side running the show. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Good morning Russell. I got that right, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you're here, and uh, we're, we're, we're going to talk not about politics, but really about public life. Uh, you know, you have been at this now for a few years. Is it three years now? Four years? Five? I don't know. The time just passes. Well, if you count my, uh, you know, I used to be the reef at the Basque County, and uh, so I've been in politics for a long time. Uh, so I, I got in a by-election in 2014, and I've been doing it ever since. What is a reeve? Reeve is a mayor. Okay. Uh, and, and, you know, obviously it's, it's more a rural that has, uh, you know, uh, at the Basco we had uh, a lot of smaller communities within our boundaries. So how, how long ago was that, David, when you became a Reeve? Oh, that... Not to test your memory or anything. I think it was in 2006 or seven. Seven. Yeah. So you've been at it for over 10 years. Yeah. But both of you come from a, a farming and somewhat of a business background. Let's, let's go back. Where did you both grow up? First of all, David. Well, I, I, I grew up on a family farm. Uh, it's by Atmore, between Atmore and Grassland. So okay. it's, it's uh, on Highway 63. And uh, so farming background, we had cattle, mixed farm. Uh, and uh, uh, then, you know, I went to, uh, you know, uh, university. And then next thing you know, I'm running, running my own business. Kathy, where, where was home for you? Uh, I was born in Calgary, and then my parents were kind of like gypsies. Every two years, they like to move around um, different parts of Alberta. So everywhere from southern Alberta down by Tabor, all the way up to Laclavish. And that's where they stopped when I was mm, probably in about grade five and just stayed there. I'm wondering about the difference between, like, David, you stayed on the farm and yourself moved every couple of years. Yeah. What was the difference, do you think, uh, in terms of growing up that way as opposed to... Because I'm like David, I lived in the same house my whole life. Mm, was it know. hard? Was it hard moving all the time? It was hard because you make friendships and then yeah. you lose them and you try to maintain them after. You know, I would write letters. There was no texting then. <laughs> so I would write letters to my friends, but you, you make new friends again and those ones kind of go the wayside and so I still have a lot of memories from all my friends from basically everywhere I lived but mm. yeah it's it's difficult. It sounds like a military family kind of life. I guess so yeah. Very similar. Yeah. Yeah. When did you meet? Um, I was in grade 12. I was 17. Yeah. So. In, in Lac... In Lac La yeah. La yeah. yeah. I was in high school. My best friend was turned out to be David's second cousin. Was it Roxanne? She was your second? It's second cousin. Second yeah. cousin, yeah. And so yeah. We made up Flintstones in yeah, Lacobish. The famous Flintstones <laughs> restaurant that <laughs> unfortunately isn't there anymore. It burned down. David, what do you remember about the first time you saw Kath? <laughs> Not to put you on the spot. I don't well, know. First thing I, yeah, obviously when I walked in, I saw her sitting with my cousin, and, and what came out was her. A smile. She, I call her sunshine now, well, apparently, because it's cold in here and it's she brings cold warmth. In here. But uh, no, her smile and her, her just just a warming smile and her big eyes. She had she has beautiful eyes. How long before you got married? After you sort of started dating? Um, wasn't long. <laughs> um, we were married in November of '86. I graduated in. From high school in June of '86, so. mm, I resemble that remark. <laughs> so you've been married over 30 years. Yeah, yeah. 31 years. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I'm a great picker, yeah. obviously, <laughs> and I'm not so sure on her choice, but I made a great choice. I know, David. You said to me once. I don't think Kathy was there, but you said that uh, you, you as a couple, kind of do everything as a, as a partnership. Yeah. And I know you do that now. But you've been doing that for a long time. Was that something that just sort of naturally happened? And, and how does that work for couples that might be listening that maybe can't even fathom the idea of actually working a marriage and a business at the same time? Well, it, it was just uh, yeah. uh, 
uh, it's really hard to describe. It just sort of just mutated into that sort of thing. Uh, 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 I'm a business-minded person, so I was always, you know, interested in, in opening up a business. So I did that, and obviously my wife is very good with the books. And I'm not so much. Uh, but uh, so we, we drove to work together. We had an office. So we were always together. So everything we did, I mean, I haven't taken a holiday without my wife. So everything we do, we do together as a family. So, uh, and I think that she's part of my strength. Uh, you know, w when I'm in Ottawa and she can't make it, I'm just totally out of place. So, so I'm really happy she's by my side all the time. Is do you like that dynamic, Kathy? I do because I well, we've been doing it. You know, like you said, we worked together for, we had our business together. We would go to work together all day, and then you come home and you're together all night. And whereas many couples, they don't see each other until supper time. And I don't know, I'm just used to that. It's always been that way. Um, and so, yeah, there was a few weeks ago, I spent time with our grandson. I wasn't in Ottawa, and um, I enjoyed that very much. But I also felt this, I, I felt lost. It's like, I'm supposed to be with him. I'm not. You know, and so it just, yeah, yeah it was, it, it just felt really uh, wrong. So when David is in the house, mm -hmm. the House of Commons, where are you when he's actually in question period and doing the things that are in, in that setting? What Sometimes I'm up in the gallery watching. <laughs> um, I, do, I do some volunteer stuff in the office. I like to be part of the everyday kind of things, and yeah. I work with his staff a lot. They, um, I don't know, they, they like to, you know, if things come up and it's like, do you think David wants to attend this? Then they'll run it by me and I'll, so we, I don't know, we kind of, I'm kind of like his personal assistant, <laughs> his volunteer personal assistant. And, and I do a lot of uh, stuff with the different spouses groups yeah, I've seen in that. Ottawa. Yeah. yeah, there's a few different spouses groups and they're fantastic. Hmm. They really are a great uh, support group. I'm going to ask a question to David and come back to Kathy. It's when you have to speak in the house. I'm imagining that it's probably a bit terrifying at first. What does it feel like when you know, okay, it's my time to speak? And uh, what was it like at the beginning? And perhaps what is it like now? Well, when I first did my maiden speech, uh, it was actually uh, horrifying. <laughs> In the sense that uh, now it, it's televised nationally, you don't want to make a mistake, and 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 uh, and you, you tend to over practice, uh, then then you lose your track of uh, your track of thought after that. So yeah. now it's more more comfortable doing that. So you know you have a message to uh, to say, and and uh, you just do it. So it's it, it, more comfortable with that, uh, you know, speaking publicly and also in the house. I'm curious, Kathy. When David is about to speak, what, go, what do you go through when you're, when you're waiting for those, <laughs> the first words to come out? <laughs> um, well, just like when, like he said, when he first started, he was, you know, it's totally different than now. Uh, when he would first start to speak, I would be nervous for him, like, you know, yeah. thinking, um, you know, trying to give him confidence from afar. But um, yeah, no, I was always very nervous for him. And now I'm just... Hmm. You know, it's like whatever. You're a seasoned pro. Yeah, I, th yeah. I think it, it, the, the fear is it's on the record. <laughs> yeah. If you do a horrible job, it's there forever. Yeah, <laughs> and then you get a call from the leader going, what did you just say? <laughs> That has happened. <laughs> <laughs> Our guests this morning, David Yordega and Kathy Yordega. Um, David is the MP for Fort McMurray Cold Lake. Uh, it changed somewhere in the middle. It used to be Athabasca, Fort McMurray? It was Fort McMurray, Athabasca Fort before. Fort McMurray, Athabasca. When did that change happen? It happened in 2015. Wow. So you've been at it a long time. When we come back, I really want to get uh, some ideas and some... some um, some of your thoughts around both the, the, the pleasures and the joys of public service and perhaps some of the challenges. How does that sound? Sounds great. Uh, you're listening to Impact. It is a team effort of United Way, Fuse Social, Shaw TV, Fort McMurray, YMM Magazine, and our friends here at 91.1 The Bridge.
Welcome back to uh, Impact. My guests this morning are Kathy and David Yordega, um, two uh, incredible people that have really become friends of our community over the last number of years as they've been serving and uh, both in Ottawa and doing a lot of events here in the community. We, we always seem to run each, into each other at public events. I'm always painting and, <laughs> and you always come by and I really do appreciate that. And I also appreciate the, uh, the art cards of mine that you have on your, on your Ottawa wall. That's great. It's a great addition. I love it. Love it. Um, you put a lot of time into what you do. Um, and I, I really do understand that it, it is public service. There's politics, but putting politics aside, you're, you're in this role to serve. And I'm curious, and this question is for both of you and David, you can tackle it first. It is, what is your favorite thing about doing this? Well, my favorite thing is actually meeting new people. Uh, you know, I'm... A, I'm sort of a humanitarian in a sense because I was brought up that way. My my father and mother, uh, we had we had since I was little, we always had uh, uh, missionaries staying at our place. So I got to hear about different countries, and so would, and and our our, our community uh, was very diverse. We had we had uh, you know uh, First Nations, we had Métis, Ukraine, yeah, everything you can imagine. We had the in Amber Valley, we had the black settlers who were farmers. Uh, so. I was brought up in a multicultural community, and and, and growing up, uh, neighbors helped neighbors. Uh, we we helped the neighbors with their cattle, and so there was a group of eight nine farmers that worked together closely. So we're all, used to working with other people all the time. So that's how I was brought up. So I really feel good about making a difference. Kathy, what about you? You're not the the MP, but really you're there side by side with David through this entire journey. What's the thing that you enjoy the most about this? Um, I would have to also say meeting the the people that like I've made a lot of really great friendships over the last number of years and um, meeting people like you <laughs> that we never would have met otherwise yeah. right yeah. and so um, that's what I really enjoy the most yeah we met for the first time you probably don't remember because you meet so many people but I believe it was the opening of the airport the day oh, that Chris okay. Hatfield was there I believe that was the very first day I don't remember what year that was. It was a long time ago. Yep, that would have been 2014 during yeah. his by-election. Yeah, yeah. Um, meeting people, important. How about um, sometimes as, a, as an elected official, you have to be putting things on your shoulders. What was it like for you when the fire happened in terms of watching what, what citizens of this region were going through in real time? What was that like, David? Actually, it's... It, it, for, for, emotional for one thing because you know you have a lot of friends and you're concerned about their safety and then I was I was sitting uh, actually before the fires uh, uh, we were at an event uh, Robbie had the uh, yes uh, I love event Wilson. I love Oil Sands event and then I had Kelly Leach with me and we flew around and we did see some hot spots like like uh, but anyways uh, so went back to uh, uh, Ottawa on that uh, Sunday and the next thing you know I find out uh, a wildfire happening in my community and so First thing I did is dropped everything, told my wife, book up flights, and we flew right back. And you know, because obviously we have, uh, there was a big concern: where were these people going to go? How bad it's going to get? So, fear, fear, very fearful for the community, not knowing what's going to happen next. Do we have the resources to get the people out? So, all these things go through your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you got you know, like a, a volume uh, uh, of information coming in. You're trying to process it. So, it's very emotional. Mm -hmm. Kathy, what was it like for you in those early days? of the fire it w yeah it was very very emotional I can just remember sitting and watching the news and just the pictures I just I, I was just in shock that I you know you see so many areas that are are burning that you recognize and it's like you you think that you see that happening in other places around the world but to see it in your own community was like it was just unbelievable April 3rd today a, w a month from now, it'll be two years <coughs> since the fire. So I know you guys talk with a lot of citizens, and I'm sure a lot of citizens engage with you through your office. What is your sense of how, how, how is everybody doing in terms of the rebuild? I think there, there's, there's mixed uh, emotions. Uh, there's a lot of things they can't replace, like heirlooms and that. So that, that, that'll be always there, like how do we replace this, how do I get those memories back? Uh, you know, some people having... Uh, having okay time because everything went smoothly but a lot of people you know some bumps 
in the way, you know, like the building the homes not going as well as they like. Uh, the economy is one big thing. Uh, you know, a lot of people, one one of their spouses lost a job. How do we afford to keep the payments going? And so it's the uncertainty is is is, is it usually you know adds to the, 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 the you know you never get over the fire. I, it'll be always there. Then you add this uncertainty. It just magnifies. You know, you know what they experienced uh, during the fire. Was there anything from a federal level that we needed to change? That we discovered that we needed to change, whether it's in terms of policy, so that we're better prepared should this ever. And it's likely going to happen again. I've heard that multiple times that we're going to see increasing numbers of forest fires, and it will affect other communities. Have we learned anything from a federal perspective that needs to be changed so that we're better prepared to to mobilize and respond? Yeah, I went through this uh, once before the Slave Lake fires when I was the uh, yeah. Reeve or Mayor of uh, the Basque County, and and I think there's a lot of things we can do, like fire smart, like like you know making sure you have fire breaks within the community, uh, you know, and, and I, I think I think federally we got to invest more in the, uh, into the municipality so they can afford to do some of these things, uh, you know, and, and thank goodness we you know Fort Murray is is we preach safety, 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 and on every job site. And and I think that was the saving grace uh, that we didn't have is, uh, you know, you know a lot more lives lost. We lost one or two individuals, which is really sad, but it could have been a lot worse. So I, I think I think we got to have a program where all communities should should go through a process. What if something does happen? Uh, mm. I think it's an educational part that that's really important. Uh, you know, federal funding for municipalities to to, to make sure to uh, make the community as safe as possible is very important. But but I think the education part is probably one of the most important important parts of things. Kathy, um, mm -hmm. one of the questions I asked a lot of my guests in the in the months after the fire was around um, w the things that happened that were really amazing from a human humanity perspective. When you think back on those, those <coughs> weeks and, and months following the fire, is there anything that rises to the top of your mind that Oh, that you remember, oh my gosh, that was such a kind gesture or, or that kind of thing. Because all of us that were in that situation experienced it. Was there anything from, from your perspective that jumps out, uh, a beautiful moment of, of, of generosity? Um, there were so many. Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, I can remember in, the, in those first days, uh, David and I were driving through, we were trying to go to all of the... Um, uh, the centers where what do you call it? Evacuation centers. Yes, yeah. the evacuation yeah. centers. And um, you know, and we stopped the closest one to our home of course was Grassland and we stopped there and there were people who had driven I don't even know where they were from and they were just stopped and parked in the um, uh, parking lot of the at the SO gas station and they just came with their own food and and fuel and stuff that they loaded up and you know, just people I don't know where they were from and they were just they had big signs, you know, welcoming, if you needed something, just come and take it. And they were barbecuing hot dogs and hamburgers. And it's like, just to see the generosity of people was, it was just incredible. In a sense, it reminded us of what being Canadian is all about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, one, one of the things that I remember was uh, when I was in, in uh, uh, Nunavut, uh, and this, this one young uh, Aboriginal man, maybe 20, 21, and he, and he said, you know, uh, I heard about the fire in Fort McMurray, uh, and I wanted to do something. And, and the, obviously this guy didn't have the means. He said, you know what, I reached in my pocket and gave everything I had. So that really touched my heart because he's not wealthy. He's struggling day to day, uh, impoverished. But you know what, that's a true Canadian spirit. You do what you have to do for your friends, neighbors, and your community. And that that still rings, you know, every time I think about the fire, that always comes up, this young man, you know, uh, self uh, uh, couch surfing and everything else. Mm. But he gave everything he had. Not just still, that'll be still in my mind until I pass on. I tell you, it's, yeah. it just, it just uh, hit my heart really hard. This man gave everything. I think each of us has several of those amazing stories that came out of a terrible event. You mentioned, uh, David, that besides the fire, there's the economy that we're, we're all struggling with to this day. And um, the oil price certainly much higher than it was, but still it feels like w the economy is slow as molasses. It's not catching up to the, the, the price of the oil. 
is there something that could help in the short term, do you feel? Is pipeline, getting that pipeline built, is that the number one thing in, in your view to help get things moving? Yeah, I, I think uh, we got to create certainty within within uh, in the resource uh, sector. I mean, I, I, we have Bill 6869 came out, which is going to even put a, a even stricter rules in. Uh, and, and I think the government's number one priority is to ensure that we can attract uh, attract investors and be competitive because we trade globally. And I spoke to, about that in the House of Commons here not too long ago about the importance of of, of, of uh, investing in our economy. We have to compete globally. If we can't do that, uh, we, we could, it's like a car. You put it in neutral and rev the engine, a lot of noise, but you're not going anywhere. So I think we have to ensure that we have enough money in, in the pockets of, of, of you know of, of families, and it strengthens their businesses. So we got to send a message out: we're open for business. Uh, we got to get our pipelines in. Uh, you know, uh, Kingdom Morgan's important, but you know, to the east, we should use our own oil within our own communities. That just to strengthen uh, all of Canada, not just Alberta. My guests this morning are David and Kathy Yerdega. David is the MP for uh, Fort McMurray Cold Lake. We're going to take a break and come back with more of Impact right after this. Welcome back to a very special edition of Impact. Our guests this morning are David and Kathy Yerdega. David is the MP for uh, Fort McMurray uh, Cold Lake. I'm going to put a gratuitous plug in. An event is coming up in a couple of weeks called the Time Razor. And at the Time Razor, I'm going to be doing a live painting. And the, the subject has yet to be determined. And I'm sort of seeking feedback about somebody that I would paint that, that epitomizes the volunteer spirit that, because the Time Racer is all about people bid on art, not with their money, but with their time, their volunteer time. And I'm wondering if either of you have any great suggestions of a, it could be someone local, it could be something, somebody national or international that epitomizes the essence of volunteerism, some, a person that you would love to have a painting on your wall that you'd be willing to donate your volunteer time. Any, well, any suggestions? I would actually like you to paint yourself. <laughs> I mean, you, you, I mean, you're always every event I go, you're volunteering your time with the paintings. You raise a lot of money for the community. Uh, you know what? I think that the, the, you would raise a lot of money with an art piece of yourself. <laughs> Making me blush, <laughs> Kathy. Do you have a better suggestion? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Um, no, I kind of like that. I think that's a fantastic. And, and, and I'll do the finishing touches. <laughs> You'll do the finishing oh, now that, touches? Now uh -oh. that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> I know the two of you have, have learned a lot about Fort McMurray and the time that you've been serving this region. I'm, I'm curious about your perception of the role of the social profit sector in building strong community. I know you've both been on United Way tours, Seeing as Believing tours. What is your sense of the importance of all of those charities and nonprofits that are the, the foundation of the community, David? Yeah, uh, you, you know what is very important because obviously the government can't do everything. Uh, uh, you need people on the ground that understand the community. That uh, the you know it, it's something from somebody from afar to make you know, to do things is, is not going to work. And I mean, like, like all these wonderful groups, like, like we have the, uh, you know, the food bank is very important for a lot of families just trying to, to survive during this downturn. Uh, without them, I don't know where they would be. Uh, you know, the Salvation Army and all these groups are amazing. And, and you know, and the good thing you brought that up, I'm actually uh, bringing an ex extra uh, staff member in uh, uh, full time. He's going to be working with, with various groups, uh, ensuring that if there's, uh, anything we can do as far as granting goes or anything else we can do to help these you know, all these various charities out because it's very important uh, and you'll be three weeks in Fort McMurray and and and, uh, and a week in the south and uh, we're going to concentrate on on small businesses and 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 working with groups that are assisting with our people who've altered the cracks whether they're having a hard time financially or 
addictions. So we're, we're going to take a different approach now. We, we have to address the issue. Uh, a lot of companies and, 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 and individuals do not have the means to, to support all these charities in the manner they did before, and that's concerning. So we have to figure out some way uh, to fill that gap. I'm not sure what the, the answer is, but I th we're going to have conversations uh, with, with, with the community, uh, seeing what we could do and how we can proceed forward. Kathy, I know that you've been uh, learning a lot about Fort McMurray in the last number of years, mm -hmm. especially on the social profit side. As you, as you reflect on all of that, have you, has anything surprised you or made you go, oh my gosh, I had no idea? Um, I think it would, uh, in the fall time, we visited the Salvation Army. And I mean, I've been there before, but I've never been behind the scenes. In the math program below, in the basement? Yeah, that was, um, that was very surprising to me, just to see that. And the, and the amount of, we were in the back where they take in the donations for the, yeah. just clothing and everything. And I could, I was, I was in awe of the, the wall of, of bags of donations. Um, and how, and the only few volunteers that are there sorting through all of this stuff and just the work they do was just, oh, it was, it's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. David? Yeah, it's it just amazing because I used to, my first summer's job was at, at, at Suncor. My, my uncle just lived up in Fort McMurray and, and, and uh, so I worked here for a number of years in the summer doing horrible jobs like washing the big trucks and the suits. It was, it was a nightmare. I decided to go to school and get an education after that. Uh, but also, I had, for many years, I had a business up here. Uh, and so I seen a Fort McMurray transform. Uh, you know, we saw a downturn before, but it was short. We haven't seen it this long before. It doesn't seem like there's a really an end to it. Uh, uh, so, like, like, the community has changed. Uh, you know, we saw the, what the community was like during the, the good years. and and uh, saw the generosity uh, of everyone. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, so now we have to fill that gap. We have to keep pushing forward. And I, I think uh, that, that moving forward that, uh, uh, that everybody got to take a second look. What can we do? One final thought before we uh, call it a show, because we're out of time. When we look forward to the rest of 2018, and if you <coughs> imagine in your mind somebody out there listening who is a constituent of yours, what would you say to them about how, what we should expect in the coming year in terms of some positive thoughts about, you know what, things are gonna be okay? What would you say, David? Well, I, I, I think um, the world's changing, obviously. The economy changes. The, uh, I, think, I think everybody doing their part is gonna make a difference. Uh, uh, slowly, we're seeing businesses coming back. Uh, uh, it's it's just really hard to peg what's going to happen, but I think the generosity of everybody and and, and the, the tenacity of, of our communities are very strong, and, and we never give up. We're mm. we're 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 a very positive community, uh, and we'll look for opportunities. I hear things coming down the pipe here. Actually, I spoken to a lot of investors that are looking in our region to do something. So there's a lot of positive things that are on the back burner right now and they're talking about, yeah, maybe it's the right time. You know, the uh, price of land went down a bit. It's, it's, there's a little bit more, uh, there's more opportunity internationally. I want to thank you both for coming in, um, David and Kathy Ordega. What's really different about uh, them as a power political couple is they do it together. <laughs> they, they really do, and they are a team, and if you see them out in the community, they're always there side by side, and uh, they strengthen each other, and they certainly strengthen us as a community. So thank you for all that you do. I know you spend a lot of time away in Ottawa, but you, when you're here, we really appreciate your presence and uh, continue, continue the great work. Thank you, Russell. Thank you for having us. You've been listening to Impact. It is a team effort of United Way, Fuse Social, Shaw TV, Fort McMurray, YMM Magazine, and our friends right here at 91.1 The Bridge.